and welcome to another Hayley Roxana Crafts video. In this video I am going to share some tips for those that are new to cross stitching, although some of these tips may be useful reminders to more experienced stitchers as well. A question I often see from someone who wants to try cross stitching for the first time is what do I need to buy to get started? So my first tip is to start with a small kit. So this is the sort of small kit that I mean. This is just one from Hobbycraft, um, but they are available from other places as well. They only cost a few pounds and it's just good to give you an idea of whether you actually like cross stitching. Um, you just want something that's small with not too many colours in it. So if I open this kit up, you can see that they come with everything you need. So you've got the chart, for the project and um, the material the needle and the thread that you need and um, so literally the only other thing that you would need to supply is a pair of sort of small sharp scissors that you can use for cutting your thread um, if you're worried about your material fraying at all while you're stitching you can put um, like masking tape around the edge or this piece of material is actually being cut with pinking shears, so that will help prevent fraying as well. Um, this material is a 14 count Ada fabric, um, which is absolutely ideal for beginners to use as the squares are really easy to define and the holes are easier to see. Um, each square on your material represents a square on the chart. That you'll be following. My second tip is to read any instructions that are included in the kit or with the cross stitch that you are going to stitch carefully. So whether you are a new stitcher or an experienced stitcher I would always advise reading the instructions included with any kit or chart before you actually start stitching. Um, one thing that the instructions will explain is how the different stitches are represented on the chart as this is something that can vary chart to chart depending on the designer. So on this Hobbycraft chart shows you here how they've represented the different types of cross stitch and the French knots and the back stitch. Um, looking at this chart there is only four stitches in it but that information is still there should you need it. In the charts that I sell, I always include this information in the basic guide to cross stitch in the instructions file. Um, so it shows you how I've represented the different stitches on the chart, but also how to do them. Um, something else that can be shown in the instructions is how many strands of thread to use, as the stranded cotton that you use for cross stitching can be divided up. It's sort of made up of six strands but you very rarely stitch with all six strands at the same time. Um, commonly, two strands are used for cross stitching, one strand for back stitching. But again, this is something that can differ chart to chart, so it's always best to check the instructions. Or another place that this information might be is in the actual key of the chart, um, which tells you what colour each symbol on the chart refers to. So if we look on this chart, you can see that the cross stitch is two threads, but the back stitch is one thread, but it can also be two threads. Um, and this number of threads you need for the other stitches included. On my charts, I always include this information in the chart files. Um, but it tells you how many strands you want. And again, with the back stitching, I have got a mixture of one and two strands in this particular chart here so it's always worth checking your instructions um, the instructions may also give additional hints and tips or additional information so on the hobby craft chart you can see that there are a couple of special stitches used in the design and so they've explained how to do them at the bottom of the chart um, with the charts that I sell, I give hints and tips throughout the instructions, um, but I also give full instructions for how to make the cross stitch into a finished product as well. 
Um, so again, always worth checking those instructions before you get started to make sure you fully understand what to do. My third tip is to start your stitching from the center of the design. It's always best to begin stitching at the center of the chart and the center of your material to make sure that the design is going to fit. Um, material included in a kit is usually plenty big enough for the design, but if you guess where to start, you might find that either the design ends up too close to the edge or worse still, you actually run out of material to stitch on. Starting from the center prevents this from happening. So on the chart, usually the center is marked. On my charts, I've got red lines going down and across and where they cross, that's the center of the chart. Um, sometimes on charts, this could just be a thicker, darker line. Um, sometimes you just get the arrows on the edges of the charts and you just have to find the point at which they meet to find the center of the chart. To find the center of your material, you could count, so count how many squares you've got across, divide it by two to find the center and the same down and then where they cross is the center of your material, which would be fine on a smaller piece. If you're doing a larger cross stitch, it might not be practical. So the easiest way to do it then is to just fold the material in half widthways and lengthways. If you just put a little crease in the center, and fold it that way and then the point where those creases cross would be the center of your work this isn't necessarily completely accurate but it's usually accurate enough to make sure you're not going to run out of your material and that your design fits nicely on it um you can start stitching with whatever square is closest to the center um, but if you would like to start from the, maybe the nearest block of colour to the centre, so say on this chart, if I decided I wanted to start with this block here with the O's, but I wanted to start at the top of it, I would just count from the centre to where I actually want to start stitching from. But always make sure you're going from the centre of the work and the chart to make sure everything fits nicely. My fourth tip is to make sure that you are getting the correct holes when stitching making sure that you get the correct holes when you're stitching and even just making sure that you're getting the holes ensures that the stitches are kept the same size so if i show you on this piece of fabric i've done some crosses where i've purposely gone into the wrong holes i've either gone in too high or i've missed the holes so all the crosses are all slightly different they're not like a uniform size, uniform shape. Um, what you want to do when you're stitching is make sure, if I just show you a few stitches, you are coming through those holes. Okay, always make sure you are getting the holes when you are stitching. Okay, like so. Like that okay and then we're gonna cross them back and you will see that this makes sure that your stitches are the same size the same shape okay they all look the same like so and it's just making sure that you are using the holes there are stitches of course where you don't use the holes but again that's another matter but for your full stitches, you want to make sure you are making use of the holes of the fabric. Tip number five is to keep the stitches in the same direction. So keeping the stitches in the same direction means doing the bottom stitch of your cross in one direction and the top stitch in the other direction consistently. Okay, so if I show you on here, I've got a row of stitches here where I have done, sometimes I have done the bottom stitch that way, but sometimes I've done it 
that way. Okay, I've not been consistent. And then my top stitches are in opposite directions. And whilst it does look okay, it doesn't look quite as good as it could look. Whereby if you do all the stitches in the same direction, it just gives you a much nicer finish to your work. Okay, so with me, I always do my bottom stitches going from the bottom left corner to the top right. And I will travel in one direction doing those. And then I will come back going from the bottom right to the top left for my top stitch of my cross. Doesn't actually matter if you do the opposite to me. So you might do your bottom stitches going from the bottom right to the top left. And then cross back going bottom left to top right. Okay. Doesn't matter as long as you are doing it the same every time with every cross my sixth tip is to keep the tension of your stitches the same so when you are stitching you want to pull your stitches so that they lie flat on the fabric but you don't want to pull through too tightly so that you end up making the holes bigger or you end up distorting your fabric um, the best way to keep tension the same is to make sure you're holding your material securely. So when I'm stitching, I always hold my material, my thumb and my index finger on the top, and then my other fingers are just underneath. And I just pull slightly just above and below where I'm stitching with my thumb and index finger, just to hold the material securely. Um, you could, or some people, choose to use hoops or frames to hold, help hold their material. Um, it's not necessary, especially with smaller pieces. It's a personal preference thing. Um, but I just hold my material firmly, like so. And then when I'm pulling my thread through, pull gently but firmly. And you can sort of feel when that is through enough that it's sitting flat but you're not pulling it too tight so that you end up distorting your material so if i just go through again just want to pull gently on it as you come through like so. so gently but firmly and just hold your material nice and tight. If you're letting your material just sort of flap about, that can end up with sort of looser tension on your stitches. Tip number seven is to make sure that your thread lies flat, especially when using multiple strands. So as mentioned in the previous tip, one way to make sure that your thread is lying flat is to keep an eye on your tension. Um, but you might want to also watch out for your thread twisting as you stitch. Um, to try to prevent this, it's best to take the threads that you need from the six strands one at a time and then put them back together for stitching. Um, another way is to untwist occasionally um, when you're stitching. And this again is something you can also do before you start stitching. So literally just let that thread dangle down and it will untwist. Sometimes you might need to actually unthread the needle and just part, get my needle in between the two strands, part the strands like that. I just run my needle up it to separate the two strands and that can help when the thread gets a bit twisted um, just to help make your stitches look nicer and then you just need to re-thread the needle again. Do that sometimes i'll take the needle right down to the material and back up again this is something else that can help with the twisting issues um another thing you can do is that as you are stitching um you could run your needle between your strands so if i just take this up and do a stitch okay and then as i'm crossing it back you could just put your needle between the two strands just to help them lie flatter on the fabric. Cross that back over. 
okay and again you could run your needle through might not be necessary on every stitch that you do you might just spot the odd stitch where your thread is a little bit twisted and that's one way to correct it without having to undo what you've done um another method that could be used is something called a railroading technique um this is where you sort of just show you it's not something i really use i tend to just do the running my needle between the threads to make them lie flat but with the railroading technique you sort of put your needle between the strands before you insert the needle back into the hole to go down like so and if i show you coming this way so you come up and then you just pop your needle between the strands like so before you push it back down um something i'm not very well practiced at because it's not a method i use but it's just another idea you could look into the railroading technique okay just to make sure those threads align nice and flat and you're getting decent coverage of your material my last tip is to take your cross stitching one stitch at a time and to count carefully. There is no need to rush your cross stitching. It's not a race to see who can stitch the fastest, who can finish pieces the quickest. Take your time and enjoy the process, but always count carefully, preferably more than once, just to try and make sure that you are stitching in the right place on your material. If you do make a mistake, it can be undone. But it's a lot less frustrating if you've just taken your time and tried to get in the right place to start with. If you've got any other tips for beginners, please pop them in the comments below. Um, and if you've got any questions, put them there too and I'll do my best to answer them for you. I've put links in the description to any products that I have used in this video. And that's everything. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Bye.